So we've built this all off this introductory term that I gave you here. I'm going to give you one that is slightly different. I'm going to ask you to work out, before we dive into our exercise, this. Oh, make sure I get it for term right. Yeah, there we go. We just looked at a log. Let's consider an exponential, okay? In some ways this will actually be easier for us, but you're still gonna have to do integration by parts. So what I would encourage you to do is to start with, this is a generalized IN term. You can actually do this just like we just did three, right? You can choose which is gonna be U, which is gonna be DV, and you're gonna get a recurrence relation out of it. Once you've done that, let's see if we can work out, once you've got a recursive formula for it, something that looks like this, this is our recursive formula or our recurrence relation here. Let's see if we can use that to work out what I3 is. Okay, so there's our two steps. Let me say them one more time. We're gonna try and work out what the recurrence relation is. It'll be IN equals, and then there'll be some stuff that'll include an IN minus one. So it will refer to itself. And then what we're gonna try and do is use that, that recurrence relation, to work out what I3 is. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes to have a play, and then I'll show you how I do it. Here's where I'm going to pick up. I'm sort of going to do what we did here with uh, the log x integral, but I'm going to do it in reverse, right? Where we ended up with, with our log x integral was we ended up with this generalized term, okay? But that was just because I was trying to do this spoiler free, because if at the start I'd introduce it to the power of n, you'd be like, oh, this is what we're doing, okay? But now, now that we know we can have this idea of a recurrence relation, there's nothing stopping us from starting right at the top at an arbitrary point on the ladder and then use that to go further down. So let's just start with x, n, uh, x to the n, e to the x, okay? What are the appropriate choices for u and dv? Here is x to the power of n. Thank you very much. We'll choose this as x to the power of n and we choose this as e to the x because because it's, it's you know, like I don't even have to do anything to integrate this, right? Um, I get e to the x there. What do I get from my du term? And x to the n minus 1. Fantastic. And by the way, that's one of the signs right there. You can be like, oh, great. It's going to start reducing, hence reduction formula, that name. Okay. So that's a good sign. When we go ahead and do this, right, I'm going to do my uv, which you can see here. Uv, right, which by the way, sorry, excuse me. <coughs> by the way, looks kind of weird. You're like, I integrate and then, huh? Like it's the same thing, but this, this does happen, right? This is what integration by parts routinely hands us minus, and then an unnecessarily large integral sign, here comes my v du, right? It's going to be my e to the x, and then I'm going to get my n lots of x to the n minus 1. Okay, now have a look. You've you got to see through it a little bit, right? Where is my recursive term hiding? And the answer is, if I pull this n out, I pull the n out, then you get e to the x, that's there, and you've got an x to the n term, except it's x to the n minus 1. So let's go ahead and put that together. I'm going to take that n out, like I said, excuse me, <clears throat> and then I get my everything up here except it's one term less, i n minus 1. Are you okay with that? Ta-da! That wasn't so hard, okay? But I said, can we use that to get to i3? So now I've got a particular value of n that I'm after. So I'm going to say, therefore, if this is i n, what's i3 going to be equal to? I'm just going to start subbing stuff in, right? I'm going to go, here's my value of n. I see it coming up three times, so I'll do three substitutions. x cubed, yeah, times e to the x, minus what? Three lots of i2. There's my n minus 1. You're like, what's i2? Don't know. Let's go again, right? Because I have a definition for what i2 is. I just have to substitute in 2. So I get x cubed e to the x. That's just hanging out the front. Minus 3 lots of. And then I once more with feeling, OK? So I'm going to go x squared e to the x minus 2 lots of i1. Do I know what i1 is? Yes. Now I could work out i1, but just for the sake of it, right? Just See how far we can take this, okay? If I go x cubed e to the x, it's still hanging out there. 3 lots of x squared e to the x. If I then say, hold on, by the definition of what 
I n is, if I just put in one, let's just see what happens. Okay. So it looks like I'm going to get, uh, I'll use a curly brace in here. I'm putting in one now, right? x to the power of one, so that's done. e to the x minus one lot of i zero. Now you're like, I started off this idea going one, two, three and counting up, right? I, I haven't yet thought about whether i zero makes sense, but does it? Look back at where we began. Does, does i zero actually have a sensible definition? Yeah. The answer is it totally does. It's x to the power of zero, which is one. It's e to the x. My favorite integral of all time. It's so favorite I did it already once today, right? So therefore I can say, I've, I've climbed down to the bottom of the ladder. I can get off this thing now, yeah? Uh, x cubed e to the x minus three lots of, and I am going to expand out all these brackets in a moment, x squared e to the x minus two, x e to the x. Okay, this thing here is the integral of e to the x, which is e to the x. E x. Ta-da! And by the way, this should look familiar. We've done this a couple of times already before, right? Uh, plus a constant. I've finished all of my integrations. Okay? So at this point here, I'm just going to kind of think to see, do I have stuff that I can take out as a common factor? It looks like an e to the x, which appears every single time. So I'm going to pull that out. And then carefully, I'm just going to look term by term. I'm going to have to do a couple expansions um, simultaneously, but I reckon we can handle it. I'm going to get an x, x cubed here. Is that okay? What comes next? Minus 3x squared. Minus 3x squared. Very good. Then here, watch out, there's a minus 3 times a minus 2 times an x. So that gives you plus 6x. Then look again. <laughs> minus 3 times minus 2 times minus 1. I've already pulled out the e to the x, haven't I? So what do I get? I've got three negatives, so I think I get minus 6. You okay with that? And then that's it. Plus your constant hanging out there. How do you feel about that process? Is it okay? Um, you can see you can build up from the bottom, like we've done here, or you can actually start from the top, from the generalized version, and then go from the top, and then just substitute in all these previous versions until you get to something where you're like, I know what that integral is, right? And just as a note for us, just because it's kind of the first time we've done it, maybe it'd be helpful for all of us to just put down explicitly what that i zero term is. It's the integral of x to the zero e to the x, just so that we all remember why we get out this term. Okay? Ta-da! Recurrence relations. Sounds fancy. Many things in extension too, like integration by parts or complex numbers, they sound fancier than they are. This is really like the combination of calculus and stuff we did from series and sequences, like a series that refers to itself.